And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Dismissal with prejudice is a very extreme sanction. And uh, case law is very clear that um, because it's uh, very extreme, I have to go through every single element and I have to make a very good record as to what, why I'm, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. So in order to establish a Brady violation, the defendant must show that the prosecution suppressed evidence, the evidence was favorable to the accused, and the evidence was material to the defense. So let's go through the elements, suppression of evidence. The definition of suppression of elements, this is case versus hatch, is while the first element requires proof that the prosecution suppressed or withheld the evidence in question, it does not require a finding of bad faith or any other culpable state of mind on the part of the prosecutor. This prong is satisfied. The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office and the prosecution failed to disclose the supplemental report to defense and provide defense an opportunity to inspect the rounds collected into evidence that Mr. Teske gave. Is the evidence favorable to the accused? The second Brady element is whether the suppressed evidence was favorable to the accused, either as impeachment or exculpatory evidence. This prong is satisfied. The suppressed evidence is favorable to the accused. It is impeachment evidence, has even been offered in this trial as impeachment evidence, and is potentially exculpatory to the defense. Critically, the exculpatory value cannot be analyzed at such a late juncture because of the non-disclosure. Is the evidence material? While well, post-trial discovery of evidence under Brady requires a reasonable probability that the result of the proceeding would have been different, discovery of evidence during trial requires an evaluation of whether the late tender has impeded the effective use of evidence in such a way that it impacts the fundamental fairness of the proceedings, and that is uh, State versus Huerta Cost Castro. This evidence is material. The late discovery of this evidence during trial has impeded the effective use of evidence in such a way that it has impacted the fundamental fairness of the proceedings. The defense is not in a position to test the state's theory as to the source of the live rounds that killed Ms. Hutchins. I'm also going to take a look at Harper, State versus Harper. The assessment of sanctions depends upon the extent of the government's culpability weighed against the amount of prejudice to the state. Quoting Chenard. Let's go through culpability. Our case law generally provides that the refusal to comply with a district court's discovery order only rises to the level of exclusion or dismissal where the state's conduct is especially culpable, such as where evidence is unilaterally withheld by the state in bad faith or all access to the evidence is precluded by state intransience. The state is highly culpable for its failure to provide this discovery to the defendant. The state unilaterally withheld a supplemental report. Santa Fe County Sheriff's Officer made the decision, and apparently also with the, with the prosecutor, as pursuant to Hancock's testimony, that the evidence was of no evidentiary value and failed to connect the evidence to the instant case. The case agent was aware of the new evidence and yet did not make an effort to disclose it to defense. The state's willful withholding of this information was intentional and deliberate. If this conduct does not rise to the level of bad faith, it certainly comes so near to bad faith as to show signs of scorching. Prejudice. When discovery has been produced late, prejudice does not accrue unless the evidence is material and the disclosure is so late that it undermines the definition, the defendant's preparation for trial. The court concludes that this conduct is highly prejudicial to the defendant. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and this disclosure during the course of trial is so late that it undermines the defendant's preparation for trial. There is no way for the court to right this wrong. Watch out! The sanction of dismissal is the only warranted remedy. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and a mistrial would not be based upon manifest necessity. Further, the sanction of dismissal is warranted in this case. The state has repeatedly made representations to defense and to the court that they were compliant with all their discovery obligations. 
Despite their repeated representations, they have continued to fail to disclose critical evidence to the defendant. Brady and Harper are satisfied. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted. Tina! You okay? I think so. Court also has power, inherent power. Per State v. Lemire, where discovery violations inject needless delay into the proceedings, courts may impose meaningful sanctions to effectuate their inherent power and promote efficient judicial administration. Well, the newspapers are going to hear about this act of bravery. The state's discovery violation has injected a needless, incurable delay into the instant jury trial. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted to ensure the integrity of the judicial system and the efficient administration of justice. Your motion to dismiss with prejudice is granted. Yo, hit that like for Dill Christian. Yo, for Dill Christian, smash that bell. For DMC, yo, smash it. Just smash it. Hit that like for Dill Christian. For Dill Christian, smash that bell. For DMC, yo, smash it. Just smash it. It's a life for a devil Christian.